very lucky to work um, to, to co-own a small business down in Brisbane which specialises on, um, on electric bulbs. We do a lot of work with people um, who have, uh, we call them our wobbly riders. So people who need a little bit of assistance, but we also do a huge amount of work with people who are travelling, moving around. And so when I was approached to give this speech, I wanted to talk about the things that we have found which influences people's decision when making a purchase of an electric bike or trike. And I see it as really around the form and the function. So what does it look like? How does it appear? And what do we actually want to use it for? And it's amazing the breadth. There's so much variety in why people are turning to electric bikes now. And it just comes down to improved accessibility for the populace. And that's why we rebranded re our company. We were previously known as Blind Freddy Electric Bikes. Nobody ever really knew, don't ask. But we now are referred to as Everybody E-Bikes. And that's what we believe in. Bikes for everybody. So why are e-bikes important in this revolution? Well, it's already there. It's already happening. And you will have seen um, just driving around or walking around the neighbourhood that people are using bikes for transport, for distribution of goods, but also just for fun. And um, most importantly, you may not have seen how people are using bikes nowadays to be able to access the community and engage with people when they are not confident being up riding a two-wheel bike um, without electrical assistance. We've seen a lot of instances recently where people use bikes as part of a multimodal approach where they might ride a bike to a, a train station and then take the train station into town rather than having to drive and saving the costs associated with that. Um, it is a very efficient form of transport. Yes, you've got to do a bit of effort. It's, uh, it's more use of your body than it is when you're, you're sitting in a car. But it's actually a really fun way of getting around. And this chart, um, which is published by a renowned uh, source, just indicates how low the amount of carbon that you're producing when you're using an e-bike. The previous speaker talked a lot about that, so I won't dwell on it. One of the things that people get very confused about when they're considering an e-bike as part of their future journey is what are the regulations? It's very confusing out there. I'd just like to, to emphasise that there is a standard that we adopt in Australia that comes from the European standard. That number is 15194. And what that actually means to you as the consumer is the bike should be rated for continuous power 250 watt. Anything higher is not able to be ridden except on privately owned land. It needs to cut the motor when you are going at speeds over 25 kilometres an hour. Believe me, when I go down a hill, I go faster than 25 kilometres an hour, but that's all me. So the other thing is that the motor only actually assists you if you are completing the pedalling action. And so you have to pedal, you don't use a throttle. In Queensland in, in particular, mid-2019 they made throttles illegal for bikes. So um, we, we are seeing more and more people with throttles. Um, get a rear vision mirror. You know who's behind you. So when people come to us, they, they usually have some key criteria that they use to actually make the decision to purchase an e-bike or not. And I've just summarized it in the six areas that I've listed there. What's your budget? What everybody needs to know how much they want to spend on a, on a purchase. Um, do they want to use a hub drive or a mid drive? The brand of the, pro of the product and the motor and the battery. The weight versus the capacity of the battery is also a trade-off that needs to be considered. Gearing is also quite important. If you like me, when I go down a hill at 50 kilometers an hour and I stop and then I have to start again, I want to be able to change gear without pedaling. An internal gearing system gives you that flexibility. External, you've got to plan a little bit more and a bit, be a bit more skillful. Branding does come into play. Some people are only interested in buying bikes that have a named brand. 
Um, but you also have the option of shop brand. We've had a lot of interest in our brand today for the range of products that we have. We're not a giant or a trek or you know, one of the big guys, but we bring in quality product. You can also buy a lot of goods online and you just need to be aware of some of the, the pitfalls of that. Um, and going to the pitfalls, you need to know about your after sales. Buying the bike in the first instance is very, the very start of the journey. Once you've got the bike, you need to know that you can keep it well maintained and you can get parts if you need them, you can get servicing completed. There's also the option, such as the Cycling Without Age, to actually rent units before you buy. And that can be a really good way to actually test the water. We also have this concept of, um, uh, what's, the, what's the expression that some people use? It's a gateway bike. So a gateway bike is where you invest in a quite cheap bike to prove to yourself, to those who influence your money spend, um, if you have them, I don't, I don't like those, um, but the people that actually you're talking to about getting a bike, you buy something cheap, you then ride it, you prove the concept that you're actually going to ride to the shops, you're going to ride to work, you're going to do it, you're going to ride every day or every week. And then, after you've been riding for a couple of years, you may then upgrade to a more expensive model because you know that you're going to use it and it's good value for money. But one size does not fit all. Um, we sell folding bikes, very popular with people that are travelling. Um, much smaller format, simpler design, tend to be either single, single geared or three gears only. Full size two wheel bikes, there's so many on the market it's quite confusing. They come in hip hub drive or mid drive, so that's the difference in the way that the actual mechanics works and the, the electronics works together. We have stabilised bikes, a lot of interest again today with people who know people who won't ride a bike because they've lost the confidence of being able to actually ride without some assistance. We call them stabilisers. People have used training wheels in the past when they're children. We try and actually use the word stabilise so there's no connotations, no, no embarrassment. And, and they, they make the bike behave like a tricycle. But, it's a folding bike, put it in the car, take it to the beach. More and more we're seeing families come to us as a means of using a bike instead of a second car. And so we have cargo bikes for that purpose. They have a front cargo or a long tail or a short back tail cargo bike. Wonderful to ride. And um, three wheel opportunities are um, amazing. So the image here on the left is a, a bike that we bring in from Holland that's called the Cortez. It's like the Rolls Royce of, uh, of semi recumbents. It's beautiful to ride. Um, the one in the middle we've got here, we've got a blue one um, on, the, on the stand today. Um, very, very difficult. To do. You can tip them, but it's much more difficult. It's a low centre of gravity, not so low you feel exposed um, when you're riding. They're fun. They, they've got ch like chopper handlebars, so you know we've got teenage boys who ride them to school and things. They think they're in a Harley. It feels like that, so it just changes the way that you feel when you're actually riding the bike. And we've also got the rugged fat tire trike on the, on the stand today as well. It's great, it looks fantastic. You don't feel like you're having to get a granny bike because you're losing your confidence with your balance. It's something that you can use just to go shopping. So going back to the function, so that was the form. The function, it's all around what are you using it for? Sustainable commuting, so a lot of speakers have talked about that today already. It's simple, you've got to have a reliable system if you're going to use it for commuting. You don't want to be changing tyres on the way to work, what have you. Um, some of the other things that are starting to happen is around um, removing those barriers to using bikes by making it easier to, to actually have an end-trip facility to somewhere safe to store your bike when you get to work. Um, battery charging facilities for e-bikes as well as for cars is something that we need to consider and um, those use of transport oriented developments, the multimodal concept. But some people aren't interested in riding to the shops or riding to um, work. They just want it for fun. And why not? Why not get out there? You know, so many people come to us and say, just, it feels good, I can ride again, I've got the wind in my hair. 
and that pedal assistance just makes it so much more enjoyable. The, the hills disappear is an expression that's commonly used. But again, if you're using a bike like an e-mountain bike, you want it to fit, you want it to be comfortable, you want it to last the distance. You don't want to get up, up or halfway up a mountain and then find out you've run out of battery. So it's all about function. And the, the, the image at the bottom there that looks a bit messy, that was just one day when Richard and I rode to the shops. We did our whole weekly shop on a short tail cargo bike. And it's quite hard to see because of the light, but that's basically, this is everything that went into those two bags and that front um, box on the cargo bike. And it was our whole weekly shop. So very functional. We have so many people that come and want to take their, not their kids, but their dogs on their bike. Cargo bike's fantastic for that because it's designed for heavy weight. I wouldn't put a Labrador or a Golden Retriever on it, but you know, dogs up to 20 kilos on a bike is, is quite reasonable nowadays. The big thing that we do that's a bit different from most bikes, we're not your average bike shop, is that we do try and get bikes for people that are starting to, to miss out on elements of their life that they used to enjoy. Riding a bike is a rite of passage. Many people um, want to continue riding into their older age. We work with children, we work with adults, we work with older people and we provide different combinations of solutions depending on where they want to ride and who they want to ride with. That also includes multi-rider vehicles. So in this case we've got a mum with a child um, on the back. The back, that bike we've actually got on the stand as well today. Um, the back rider can be up to 60 kilos on this model. So we have husbands and wives that want to ride. Um, Richard wouldn't ride with me on the back, I'd have to ride with him on the back, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, bit of fun. So, the upshot is no matter how young, how old, how worried or nervous you are, or how wobbly, there are e-bikes now out there that you can test ride. We will walk, walk you through it, actually get you the confidence to try again. And remember, on an e-bike, you don't need to wear Lycra. Thank you.